I interviewed for a lot of jobs for, for about nine months, and I remember it was a pretty tough time. And people who, um, who call me from time to time and say, well, you know, I've got a Harvard degree, I've got this, I've got that, why can't I find a job? I said, a lot of it is just patience and, and being um, uh, hard-nosed about it, that no one's going to really do you a favor, and you're going to have to sort of start at a very... Uh, menial position perhaps. My first job at ABC paid me $110 a week and it was, uh, I'm so lucky that, that I did it. It was a job, I was a junior research assistant and I worked in this office that was, uh, it was like a bullpen area. There must have been, it was like one of those scenes out of the apartment when, in the insurance office. There was like 35 people in the, in the office and uh, most of the people left at noon to play hearts, and everybody left at 4.59. But for me, it was a fantastic start because research really is the heart of a network. It's really the, 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 the fact of the matter is all shows have to work or, or not based on, on ratings. So it gave me a fantastic understanding of the, the guts of the business, and you interfaced with the sales department, and you interfaced with the entertainment department, you inter interfaced with the news department, and um, it was a very uh, interesting time. And I was, at the time, ABC was doing so poorly, they had, they had a, a story that if you put the Vietnam War on ABC, it would be canceled in 13 weeks. So there was a sense of like, this place is like a joke. And uh, Patty Hearst, who was a very, celebrated uh, person who was being hunted by the FBI at the time. They used to say that she was starring in our Sunday Night at 8 show. So there was really a sense that this place, the only thing that could happen is that, is that it can be turned around. And I'm sitting there making $110 a week writing memos and saying to people, are you watching this stuff that's going on? It's terrible. One of the things that I learned is that research is very much uh, something that you can manipulate. Uh, we had a show on ABC called Kolchak the Night Stalker with Darren McGavin. And the pilot was good, but this, the series was terrible. And the man who was running ABC at that time, his name was Fred Pierce, was a uh, person who had come from research, so he believed in the value of it. And he would study this research, and the research said that those people who were watching Kolchak loved it. But, but you come in every Tuesday, whatever, and look at the ratings, and the ratings were terrible. And I said, the, it, the show stinks. But my boss would say, well, it can't stink because the research says that at least those people watching it like it. So the real problem is we have to market it better because if we can just get more people to watch it, the ratings will go up. So they ordered a second season based on, on research. And um, one day I went into my boss and I said, can I look at actually the, the real the questionnaire? So he pulls out the questionnaire and it said, what do you think of Kolchak? And I said to, to my boss, whose name was Cy Amlin, do you think it's possible that these uh, uh, people answering the question think it's Kojak? And he looked at me and said, well, what do you mean? And I said, well, it's just possible that these operators aren't getting it right. He said, well, what do you think we should do? I said, well, just for fun, let's do a, uh, the next time we go out into the field, let's do Kolchak the Night Stalker rather than, Col than Kolchak and see what happened. So they did the next research and the research just went into the toilet. So now he said, well, now what are we going to do? And I said, well, I'm only making $110 a week. Said, well, you got to tell Fred Pierce that the research is wrong. I said, I'm not doing that. Like, I'm not the low guy here. And he said, well, I'm not telling him that our, that our methodology was wrong. So, I mean, that was a really great lesson in the... Um, value of, of really sort of digging deep and making sure that uh, that uh, you, you actually read the real research and understand it, because it can be very easily manipulated. Who told Fred Pierce? I told Fred Pierce. How did he react? <laughs> he was upset. <laughs> but I said, look, I'm, I'm just the messenger. Don't shoot me. Well, I became somewhat known as an irritant. I would send these memos out and say, what is going on? I mean, I would actually just like send memos to people in the entertainment division. So finally, I, I think I was, my goal was to goad someone into giving me a shot. And then I, I actually did, and, and so I'm sitting there in New York, and the first thing I figure out is maybe I can get some uh, 
interest if I if I just take an area that, that nobody is interested in and just sort of take it as my own. So I started to watch all the British shows, and I saw uh, and I saw a show called Man About the House that I thought was really uh, something that we could actually buy the format rights to and develop. And um, somehow or other, I did acquire the show, and I got the tape to. Uh, uh, Fred Pierce, not not to Fred Pierce, to Fred Silverman, who was head of the entertainment division, and we did a pilot which was called uh, Three's Company, and one of the things that was interesting in those days is that um, you had a certain kind of executive at the networks that I don't think exists anymore for for lots of reasons, and when Marcy's here we can talk about that. But Fred believed so strongly in the uh, idea of it that even though we made a, a kind of a scratchy pilot, that he said, well, let's keep going because somehow I think this is going to work. So we actually made three pilots on Three's Company before it went on the air. And the first time we made it, um, John Ritter was in the pilot. And the second pilot, uh, and there were two other people who ended up not uh, being on the air. And then we made a pilot with John Ritter and Joyce DeWitt and the other role wasn't well cast. And the third pilot we made with Suzanne Summers and Joyce DeWitt and, and, um, and John Ritter, and that went on the air. But it was a real interesting lesson about how, you know, if the script isn't right and you believe in the inherent idea, you keep working on it. If the pilot isn't right and you, you still feel that there's something in it, you don't just sort of give up, you, you keep sort of chiseling away.